but I was writing for anybody who would pay me um, very little money. I, I'd very accept anything. I was quite cheap. I think one of the very first games I reviewed when going freelance was uh, Knights of the Old Republic. Which, uh, which I loved, and I hate Star Wars. Extremely late night sessions on uh, Soul Calibur 2. That was a kind of uh, the thing for me and my flatmates at university. We would just play that to absolute death. And of course, um, on the Xbox, you have the uh, yeah, Spawn as the uh, the system exclusive character, and he became a kind of uh, the one that everyone would play in the in the house because um, we had friends who had it on the GameCube, we had friends who had it on the PS2. So it was kind of a point of pride to learn how to play Spawn because uh, that was something that they couldn't play either. I've got a pet, I have a pet grudge as a critic. Any reviewer will give a Star Wars game an extra 10% uh, just because it's Star Wars, and that drove me mad. I played a fair amount of Street Fighter Third Strike on that, purely because it was the cheapest way to buy that game, and Marvel vs Capcom 2 as well. And the PS2 version of that game cost upwards of £90 on eBay, but the Xbox was, was like £10, which is where I went. Morrowind came out on the Xbox, and it was complete, you know, it was, you know, this this entire RPG, huge in scale, you could play it for hours and hours and hours. And that was the that was what Xbox always had. And I think you saw that reflected again in Oblivion, which you know, another Elder Scrolls game, um, which came out in the Xbox 360. And again it was that kind of that step forward. That was an experience that was so huge in scale that uh, previously you thought it wasn't possible on a console. It made me love Star Wars again. It made me the, reminding me why this universe, even though it wasn't the same universe, the idea of the, these tropes and these conventions were just interesting and emotional. I think I inherited it with a view to getting hold of Psychonauts and um, Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow because obviously Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow, a multi-platform game but Xbox quite clearly had the best visuals. I think it was Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3, it was. We would just spend hours and hours and hours on that playing um, horse, just like doing tricks and then better tricks and then better tricks and then I probably would have got a higher class of degree, honest, if I'm honest, if it hadn't been for Tony Hawk. The other game was um, that I think defined the original Xbox was the original Splinter Cell, which just looks amazing. I remember seeing that game and the, the lighting and the shadows and obviously it was a take on uh, the stealth genre that hadn't really been done that way before uh, other than Metal Gear Solid which was probably a bit more arcadey. About three years before uh, Cotswold came out I was in the pub with um, Greg Bioware and this is like about 12 o'clock so it's a really quite dingy chain pub and we sit everyone else has gone to the bar and we're sitting around the table quite intensely and he basically lays out this is what you know we want to be the biggest RPG company in the world and he's, he's got that exciting drunk man vibe to him uh, and what we want to do uh, uh, you know what we're going to take, take what we do now and basically just take some tropes, like reduce the party size to, you know, three, and try, you know, and make it accessible, make it work in the genre in that way. And he basically laid out their plan for Cottle before Cottle. So when that arrived, I thought, I pretty much like raised an imaginary glass thinking, well done, you've really done it.